I'm joined now by Mike Manypenny. He is running against Congressman David McKinley for the 1st Congressional District. Thank you so much for joining me today. Really Thank appreciate you. your time. Thank you for having me. Well, first, go ahead, introduce yourself to the voters and sort of make your pitch. Well, I'm Mike Manypenny. I'm a, uh, a small businessman and farmer, uh, former member of the West Virginia House of Delegates. Uh, I'm also a public servant. I belong to, uh, on the board of directors of 10 nonprofits that help uh, build the community and help the citizens within it. Um, I uh, am, am really excited for, about this race, and I think that uh, I have a lot to offer uh, the voters of, of West Virginia. Now, you currently live in Grafton, yes. so not in the Ohio Valley, but you are from Chester, and you went to Oak Glen, so you know the area well. Oh, yes. I, I'm a native of the, the Panhandle. Uh, I love Chester and the, it, the Weirton and, and Wheeling areas, too. What do you think this area needs uh, to jumpstart its growth? Well, we really, I mean, a lot like our young people today, I had to leave the state uh, to find opportunities when I graduated. So that's really the focus of our campaign is to try to create opportunities, not just for our coal miners, but for our young people and all West Virginians. And I believe we can do that by starting to rebuild our crumbling infrastructure across West Virginia and across America. What are some fundamental differences between you and David McKinley? Well, I'm a farmer and he's a millionaire. I think that's probably the starkest difference that, that we have between us. And, and I've worked as a, a legislator trying to find balance between our environment and jobs uh, because we, we definitely need good paying jobs uh, to, so our, our citizens can put food on the table and a roof over their heads. But we need to make sure that they have a clean, safe, healthy environment that they can come home to and raise their families in. And speaking of the energy industry, uh, how do you strike the balance between keeping those jobs here, those coal jobs that many West Virginians rely on, many people in the entire Ohio Valley rely on, and then, of course, uh, moving to renewable energy sources? Well, it, it's an important issue is to diversify our economy because that's one of the things lacking, especially in, in the most of the state of West Virginia. However, we're very fortunate in northern West Virginia to have a more diverse economy. Um, I do believe that we can save the coal jobs while we diversify that economy by doing what I just said about requiring all those public funded projects by Made in America products, which can revive our industrial base, including steel. Even on a limited basis, it would increase demand for metallurgical coal and increase demand for coal mining jobs while we're trying to diversify that economy. Spoken with uh, your challenger many times, and uh, he often talks about the EPA regulations and how they are hurting West Virginia's economy. What are your views on some of the EPA regulations passed during the Obama administration and even beyond that? Well, I, I think that we need to work with the EPA to try to make sure that they're not overstepping their bounds in, uh, especially in states that would be impacted so heavily like West Virginia. However, I do understand where they're going and I think there are ways to work around that. We could actually give incentives for uh, our citizens to buy electric cars, which would increase demand for coal burning electricity in West Virginia and across the country. So while we're trying to diversify that economy, we can boost coal mining jobs as well as preserve the existing ones we have. We've been talking primarily so far about the economy. And uh, so would you say that diversifying the economy is your main staple in your economic plan to help the state? I think so. Okay. Is there anything you'd want to add about that that, that you, we haven't talked about yet? We've talked about the <clears throat> coal industry and renewable energy, talked about jumpstarting the economy with diversification. Well, actually, uh, there is. I was working uh, while I was in the West Virginia legislature to get an industrial hemp bill passed, which could create uh, high tech jobs. Uh, we're actually doing research uh, with WVU and uh, the Department of Agriculture on, uh, on creating. Uh, high-tech applications that could be job creators for West Virginia and across America uh, using uh, hemp to make graphene which can be used for high-capacity compact batteries, integrated circuits, activated charcoal for water filtration and flue gas filtration in our power plants. Now, hemp sort of leads me to my next uh, question here, next topic. You are uh, pro-medical marijuana, <clears throat> correct? I am. And are you pro- uh, recreational marijuana as well? Actually, I, I am still on the fence on the recreational aspect of marijuana because I, I think that uh, it, it is a slippery slope and, and I, I don't want, I'd like to see what's going on with the states that have passed it a little bit longer. I believe, you know, they are uh, the uh, laboratories of democracy and I would like to hold off on that. But I do support medical cannabis. I think a doctor should be able to prescribe anything that could help people. I think he needs every tool in his toolbox to fight cancer, multiple sclerosis, Crohn's disease, pain, 
uh, epilepsy, and a myriad of other diseases that, that have been found to be effective using medical cannabis. Now let's go to the opioid problem in the state of West Virginia. It's an incredibly pertinent problem, not only here, but across the United States. What would you do to help fight that problem and save lives? Well, when I was in the West Virginia House of Delegates, we had studied that in the Judiciary Committee, and it showed, and, and we had testimony given to us that showed for every dollar invested in diversion, prevention, and treatment, gave a $21 return on that investment, and we need to extend treatment programs to, instead of these short programs, to be six, nine months to try to get these people clean. Uh, I worked with uh, a, a group um, out of uh, Charleston uh, that was trying to uh, get more beds in West Virginia for treatment. And that's one of the problems we have is we have a shortage of beds. And of course, that's probably because we don't have the funds to finance those beds. Um, I, I think we need more investment in treatment. You're talking about a shortage of beds and that would mean a shortage of treatment centers just all over yes. the state of West Virginia. And, and we do experience that up here. Many people call and say they just don't know where to go. So how would you uh, make it a priority or would you make it a priority to get more treatment centers in the Northern Panhandle? Across the state, yes, especially in the Northern Panhandle where we have a lot more traffic coming in from Chicago and in some of the other big cities. How do you do that? How, how, do you, how do you get those treatment centers in the Northern Panhandle and in the state of West Virginia? Because a lot of these neighborhoods, it's, it's great on paper, but nobody wants it in their backyard, so to speak. So what do you do there? That, that is a problem, and, and that's, an, that's a local issue, and, and I really don't have an answer for that. Okay. Uh, moving on now, what do you believe is the biggest problem facing the state of West Virginia? Well, right now it, it is lack of opportunity, and that's why we've focused our campaign on trying to create opportunities. Um, and, and to jump back to the hemp thing, um, we believe that we can also revive the Polymer Alliance Zone, which is struggling right now, uh, which is, is, is our base industry for producing plastics in, in Ohio Valley. And uh, the demand for bioplastics is really going through the roof. And I think that, uh, you know, since hemp is one of the best uh, cellulose uh, products that can be broken down into bioplastics, it would be a perfect fit to adopt, adapt that industry into the bioplastics industry. In 2014, you lost your bid for re-election. Yes. Um, critique yourself. Why do you think you lost that bid, and how have you changed over the last couple of years uh, so that you have earned and deserved this position? Well, one thing that most people don't understand is I was one of 14 in 14 targeted by the RNC, the Republican National Committee, for seats that they wanted to turn over in 2014. And they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars for a seat that only pays $20,000 a year. So I believe that we need to get the big money out of politics, especially the dark money that comes in from out of state. And when I get elected, I propose that we fight to overturn the Citizens United uh, decision made by the uh, United States Supreme Court. Now, chances are, if, if you do win, um, there's, it could be a majority Republican, it could be a majority Democrat. We just don't know. This election cycle has been anything but predictable so far. If it's a majority, majority Republican, how do you propose to reach across party lines and get things done? I've always been a good uh, communicator. Uh, I've always worked well on a bipartisan fashion while in the West Virginia legislature. And I will uh, make lemons, lemonade with whatever lemons I'm given. Is there anything else you'd like to add today? I, I would like to add one thing. I, and being involved in 10 nonprofits that, that help the community and the citizens that live there, I, I have learned a valuable lesson. Is that is, you only get as much out of the community as you put into it. And, and I receive so much uh, value from giving. And, and I really appreciate uh, you guys you know, helping us out today and, and getting some exposure. Um, but yeah, I, I believe that people need to re really get out there and volunteer. Mike Manypenny, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And good luck on November 8th.